Hello again, and welcome back. We are once again headed off on the New York Fiber Trail. I am vlogging my way through upstate New York yarn stores, fiber mill stores, what have you. Today, I am going to go to two stores, one in Cortland and one in the Greater Binghamton area, and then tomorrow I have one in Owego, New York, and two in Corning. So let's go right now. We're going to stop in Cortland and go see a mill. I have made it to the Cortland stop for the day, which is the Stromba Mill. It is a little shop kind of on a main street in a small town outside of Cortland. Let's go inside and have a look. Well, that was a really cool experience. Um, it's a very tiny shop and she mostly only stocks things that she actually mills here at the mill, but this little tiny building is the mill. And the owner, Terry, just gave me a really great tour and she walked me through all of the different stages of milling and then different uh, finishing for the fiber after it's been milled. It was really interesting to see all the different machines. I haven't been through a mill in person before, so it was cool to learn about how the fiber gets processed. And she has a lot of really unique craft products and like roving and, you know, it's the kind of thing that makes me wish I was a spinner, but I'm not, I'm not tackling a new hobby right now or anytime soon, but it was really neat. I'm definitely going to come back towards the holidays because I think there's some really great warm weather potential with her fiber. Um, I, the only thing I'm bringing home today is a little souvenir, just a little alpaca made of felt. She showed me how the felting machine runs and that was really cool to learn about and see like the felter and what they do because she's like low to no waste and it, she was talking about all the creative opportunities they have to use up materials that might otherwise not get used at a larger mill where they don't have as many options for using up all the bits and bobs that are left over from larger projects. So my little friend here was made with the leftovers and is coming home with me. And right now we are off to a yarn store in Endicott, New York. And that's our last stop for today. So let's drive on down there and I'll see you when we get there.
All right, so it's hot sitting in my car in the sun, so I'm going to talk a little fast, but that is a gorgeous yarn store, and you can tell that it's been there for a while. It is packed full, similar to Yarn Cupboard that I went to a couple weeks ago, which sadly had a fire, actually, and they lost a lot of their stock. I feel awful, but I am selfishly glad I got to see it before that happened because it, it's a cool experience. Um, this place is packed with so, so, so many yarns. It's so interesting and so overwhelming to look at them all. She did have a very large like clearance sale section in the basement, which is where I spent most of my time because I'm trying to not go for broke, you know, going to a bazillion yarn stores this summer. Um, and you know, I've been kind of on a kick of knitting summer tops from summer fibers and like accidentally buying enough uh, yarn to make another summer top at basically every yarn store that I go to. So completely predictably at this particular store, I bought a sweater quantity of Noro. But it's so pretty. It was on sale. This is Noro Tenon. I got five skeins, which is 1250 meters. And it's, it's some sort of medium weight, like some DK to worsted, I guess. Like most Noro, it's a little thick and thin. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's like sage green gray colorway. It's got the standard you know, Noro color changes that you expect. It's beautiful and rustic and chromatic. And it was on sale for $16 a skein, which is rather unheard of. Actually, I didn't look. I don't know what the original price on these skeins was. It doesn't say. I don't know. But it's a lot. I mean, like, I always look at and admire Noro at local yarn stores. And it's usually well out of my budget to buy a sweater quantity. So this was just a unique opportunity to get a large quantity of Noro for a good price. And it was beautiful to boot. So that's it for today. I've done my two stops, but I will see you in the morning for the three that we have on the schedule for tomorrow. Good night. Good morning. We are back with special guest mom. Hi, Bob. Hi. <laughs> we are driving to Corning today, and for the first time in this series, I am not driving myself, so I can actually knit in the car on the way there. Um, in the first episode of this, I got that like cotton blend sock yarn from Oliver's Originals in Syracuse, and that is slowly becoming, you can't see it at all, <laughs> a moonset tea <laughs> from Mozetta. So, very on trend, but I couldn't resist. And it's going to be really nice when it's done. So I'm going to knit on the way. We're going to do the two yarn stores in Corning and then drive back for one more and we go before lunch. So I'll see you when we get there. I just finished up at Woolly Minded. That was 
such a cute shop. We had a nice conversation with the owner. She had this like cool hallway that was just like an aisle of yarn and had nice finished object samples on the other wall. Really fun to browse and look through her selection. I picked up one skein of yarn. It is Manos del Uruguay Alegria. It's a sock blend. It's a 75-25 superwash. Um, it's just this, the colorway is ox blood, but it's just quite pretty burgundy. It can never hurt to just get a solid, right? It was on sale. And I've got so many single skeins of variegated. There's something to pair with it, absolutely. But I got these little floral buttons that are so cute. They kind of tinkle like they're porcelain in the bag. Oop, can't. I got two patterns and I got two of each. Oh, they're not going to show up. I <laughs> think they're so friggin' cute. I'll have to get footage of them later to show you properly. There's a little free stitch marker in there with the store logo on it. Um, I love those buttons. I think they're like the perfect mismatched, whimsical aesthetic to add to a cardigan someday. So right down the road is the next stop, which I don't even remember what it's called, but we're going to walk about a block and a half and be there soon. another super cute little shop uh this one had a lot of local selection she had a heavy emphasis on sustainability and not using uh, synthetic fibers and stuff there's a lot of embroidery a lot of tools and notions and you know so much to look through and look at it was really fun i did make one purchase and the shopping bag she gave me is so sick and cute it's like worth showing off it's got the store logo on it it's a linen bag it's got like the drawstrings to use it as a backpack. It's got handles on top. It's like such a nice souvenir. Definitely a future project and or shopping bag. The item I purchased is not yarn. Guess what? It's an embroidery kit, which is really cute, but it's yarn related because it's lavender sachets to put in your yarn stash. So I have dabbled in embroidery before, but I'm not very good. But this is a nice chance to get reacquainted. Um, and then have a nice functional pretty object to use in the yarn room after the fact. Now that we've wrapped up in corning, we are headed to get a cup of coffee and drive back to Owego to go back to Redbird Fiber Art, where uh, we've been before, but we, they didn't do the stamps yet. So I'm headed back for my stamp and to, of course, give you a tour. All right, I am back in Owego, which is actually my hometown, sort of, from outside of Owego. Uh, and I'm going back to Redbird Fibers, which if you remember, I talked about on the podcast like a couple months ago. I did stop there in May, but they hadn't started the passport program yet. And of course, I didn't give you a tour. So I'm walking over today. I'm going to give you a tour, get my passport stamped, and see what they've got.
Okay, well, I had a nice walk around Redbird Fiber Arts. I decided not to purchase anything this time, but I was here recently and I bought a skein of hedgehog fibers last time that I still haven't used yet, of course, because I acquire yarn much faster than I use it. Um, it's pretty it's much the same. It's a really cute store. They have mostly wool, but um, a, a good selection of some commercial stuff too. They have like rotating displays out front. It's a really cute space. They're just getting up and running. So if you're in the area, definitely give it a shot. So this weekend was another lovely, successful jaunt into the world of the New York Fiber Trail. I had a lot of fun um, visiting New York stores. I think one of the highlights for me was definitely getting to go through the mill yesterday and like understand more about the milling process and learning new, uh, new things about fiber. Because, you know, I see a lot on the finish end, but not in the middle. So that was really fun. And I also had a great time in Cortland. Those were two really well-stocked, really unique shops that I loved to look around and see all the trinkets and tools they have and talk to the owners. And of course, every yarn store that I went to was very fun. And I recommend always stopping at every yarn store that you see. Even if I haven't been there and told you to go, every yarn store in this video was definitely worth going to. And I had a great time as ever. So if you haven't watched the previous videos in this series, please give them a shot. There's a playlist on my channel of all of the videos. And of course, there's more to come. This is three of many. And this fiber trail goes through October. So I will continue making these through Rhinebeck weekend, where of course I'll make videos about Rhinebeck too, but I have a lot of plans for the rest of the year. So thanks for joining me today as always. I'm so glad that you took the time. Please subscribe if you haven't already to check back for future episodes. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.